Welcome to episode number five of the one podcast to eventually rule them all. This is a podcast about a group of friends getting together and giving their opinions and mostly talking about video games while also dabbling into the world of professional wrestling, card games, and anything else that might tickle our fancy. I am joined today by the man who lured a creepy demon girl into his bedroom for a one night stand, the gingerbeard man himself, Cody. God damn it. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Okay, we'll move on. Is Andrew supposed to take it from there? <laughs> you can. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm Ginger Beard Man Gamer. Uh, Cody is my real name, but uh, you know I'm not even gonna plug the Twitch at this point because I ain't streamed in like a month. <laughs> but I do have a YouTube that I put videos up on weekly, uh, Ginger Beard Man Gamer, and then I'm on Twitter at t Ginger Beard Man. Also joined by the man who deserves any and all of your respect for being the best damn content creator on planet America. He is the friendliest Jake. What's going on, guys? Y'all already know about my Twitch. Best go follow that shit. I'm trying to get to 500 by the end of the year. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash friendly place X. Post on, I'm going to start posting on YouTube again on Monday. So the day that this podcast goes up. And you can follow me on Twitter as well on, at friendly place. Next, he is the glizzy of glizzies, the one wiener that even Joey Chestnut won't even choke down. He is the Indiana gentleman himself, Devin Bliss. Hey, that's me. Follow me on Twitter, SexyWB. Also, was a hot dog for Halloween. Hey. Uh, hmm, girlfriend loves it. Hey. And I'm the Beast like Note, and I do not watch anime. But we are joined... <laughs> By another human being, the one who was supposed to be one of the founding fathers of this podcast, but decided he doesn't like to do fun things with his friends. We also signed him to a one-episode contract with an option for another episode if he chooses to. Uh, today we are popping his top turd a cherry. Please welcome Caleb. Hey, what's up? Thanks for having me for this one episode. I'm here to redeem myself, since you guys like to shit talk me. <laughs> it's not gonna I work. Make, I don't make content. I don't stream. So fuck off. You're on Twitter, though, like all the fucking time. I don't post anything relevant. Caleb, I says my friends says deserve their happiness. I see <laughs> Caleb. Caleb knows my Twitter handle more than I do. I don't even know my own Twitter handle. Caleb At- SXE44. <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right. Um, I'll never, oh, real quick, before we start, before we start, I got to talk about the tweet. My friends deserve their happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb, you petty bitch. <laughs> what happened? Caleb is easily angered and easily saddened. I was but happy we love for him. you guys. Yeah, He's you quick- were. Caleb is quick to turn on his friends. <laughs> I, also, I was happy for you guys. Passive you aggressive, Caleb. All right. Anyways, uh, today we'll be going over the new Pokemon DLC, Crown Tundra. We'll be discussing yeah, everything we'll about video games made into movies. Um, we'll be talking mm-hmm. about some games, barring other things from other games. Um We'll be talking about the suspense around Hex buying the buying back optic and the future of the Chicago Huntsman and possibly the LA Thieves joining the Call of Duty League, as well as Cyberpunk being delayed and other news about it. But let's start off first with uh, the new guy. Redeem yourself, pussy. <laughs> um, I think we could discuss, uh, let's see how many hours we've all put into one single video game. And see... I, I did my research last night. Did, did you? you? I did. I, I think I know it because I think I've seen it before. I want to say it was FIFA 19 and you had over a thousand hours into it, if I'm not mistaken. All right. If you can guess my top three played games, I will give you $20. Halo Ooh, I know two. it's definitely FIFA 19. Halo 2. Nah, it would be Halo 3 if it's any of the Halos. This is only Xbox One games because I can't really go back and check oh, Xbox 60 and all that. Uh, so I'm going to say FIFA 19. Black Ops 2. Black, uh, no, uh, <laughs> Black Ops 4. There's and, a 4? Yes. <laughs> um, God, I don't know what the third one would be. I'm trying FIFA to think of what came out that he played a lot. The Witcher. Skyrim? No, he's not a Skyrim person. That's, I mean... He doesn't watch anime. Why would he play Skyrim? Because <laughs> those things are definitely correlated. Yeah, same, same thing. Really. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the third one would be. It's definitely FIFA, Black Ops 4, and then I'm trying to think of what the third game could be. Maybe Black Ops 3? FIFA 18? 
Not unless he's not unless he's sunk a lot of time into FIFA 20, but I don't think he's dumped that many hours into it yet. I mean, last I saw, he was like three thousand and zero and seven. So you know, have you beaten The Witcher three yet, Snow? No, nah, no. Have okay. you played uh, Monster Hunter World? Unfortunately. Okay, so it's not that one. <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> Minecraft. Ooh. He played that on the computer. Mm. Wow. Because I yeah. have thousands break of us, hours in Minecraft. Fence. Give us, give us your list. All right, coming in at number five, with six hundred and twenty-one hours played. Holy shit! FIFA sixteen. Right. Okay. Yeah. Coming in fourth, with five hundred and thirty-two hours played. It's the newest Modern Warfare. No okay. Shit. Okay. Fuck, you have that many hours into it. Coming in third with seven hundred and eighty-two so hours. The first Destiny. Mm, uh, yeah, fuck, I forgot all about Destiny about that one. Game. <laughs> we were yeah, on that, that shit game at all. all the time. Coming in at number two with eight hundred and twenty-eight hours, Black Ops Four. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And coming in first with eight hundred and eighty-eight hours played, FIFA Fifteen. Fifteen. Damn. On the Xbox One. Yes. And I have. Hon- no, no way. I have honorable I mentions. Honorable mentions goes to FIFA 17 with 523 hours, FIFA 18 for 474 hours, and Apex <laughs> with 396. I love that five of your top ten are FIFA. I know. I love it. <laughs> well, I mean, when one yeah, game hate takes four hours. I mean, I would hate to count Madden, but Madden from last year, probably a whole lot. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, mine's probably Skyrim and... Uh... Uh, Monster Hunter World. How many hours do you think you have in Skyrim? So if we're counting all of the times that I've bought it, probably close to a thousand. Okay. <clears throat> I can probably tell you my definite top two. I I definitely know my number one. And it's Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Soul Silver, like more than Heart Gold, but I played both of them. So definitely Soul Silver Heart Gold. Is that the one that Caleb sold? Oh yeah, that is sure. Not is, worth bud. over a hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, you piece of fucking garbage. I'll tell you guys that... mine from PS5 or PS4 because that's all I can really think of. Mine from PS4 um, is probably Monster Hunter. Mine's definitely Monster Hunter at number one. Number two is probably The Witcher Three, and then number three would probably be like fucking NBA 2K. Like yeah, 18. yeah. I'm. I don't know. I just. I can't. I can't count sports games. Let's I, see. You know, not counting sports games. Not counting a sports game. Number three would probably be. Gee, Mine might hard. be God of War. Probably God Skyrim. War. Fun. Either Skyrim or Fallout Four, because I played the shit out of both of those games. Oh my, my third would actually probably be Binding of Isaac, because I put a lot of time into that game. Uh, you know, I've actually put a lot of time into Sword and Shield too. So that's that's also possible. I'm at like I'd, 200 hours. On I that do have, now. I do have, I don't have that many hours into it, but I probably have about 50 hours into it. I am at 193. Yeah, me and Caleb are about to, we're around the same range. Zero. I'm at but almost 200. My number one was Pokemon X and Y. I had <laughs> 997 hours in that game. Jesus. And then. <laughs> And then on Xbox One, probably be Skyrim, if not one of the Call of Duties right behind it. And then for PS4 would probably be like Destiny 2. I think I put the most time in that game on PS4. Because I don't really play a lot of games on PS4. I don't. I didn't really put that many hours into uh, Destiny 2. I tried to, but like it was hard to find a solid squad to be together with all the time. Yeah, I played it for a so, little bit. And... Well, I think, I think what this all boils down to, this whole conversation, is Caleb Skyrim. wants us to talk him into playing The Witcher 3 again. and actually playing <laughs> it. You know, I almost bought it the other day, and then I was like, I probably should Would have been the right move. Didn't you get stuck in... Oh, here's a story for you like guys. Since you guys are shit on me for this. I can't <laughs> wait. I really can't. So, when you guys were talking about The Witcher 3... You mm-hmm. guys got to the goat story. That's where <laughs> I quit the fucking game. Caleb, this dude Caleb, was listen, like, "Hey, listen. oh, I know, I know where exactly." That's where, where I quit the game the first time too, and then I started again, and I got through that. I persevered, 
and it became my favorite game of all time. And to be fair, like I wasn't used to that style of game anyway, because I was right. more of like the hack and slash, like charge in, slash it down, crack. move on. You can't do that. It's more like a Dark Souls style game where you have to be strategic, dodge, like plan your attacks. And when I first started playing, like I found this Griffin and I was like, bet, bitch. And I fucking <laughs> charged that thing. And dude, that thing ripped me to shreds. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah. like, when you first spawn on that hill, there's, like, I think a couple skeletons, if I do remember correctly. Like, a couple of their hits were knocking my health down. And I was like, this What difficulty were you playing on? Probably normal, if I can. Mm. I think so. And then I, I started persevering through it, got to this guy's goat, and I was like, is this what this fucking <laughs> game is? Find this goat that keeps running away, beat up this bear, and as soon as I got done with that mission, I literally put the game back in the case, and this dude that I was friends with at the time handed him the case and went, you can have this for free. I hate it. No, I, I'm with you, because I quit at that exact same time the first time I played it, and then I was like, fuck, I'm never touching that game again. That game's stupid. And then Man. I played through, I got through that, and it became my favorite. <clears throat> Didn't you get stuck in the beginning, like in a cave with a portal? Me? A, no, Caleb. Um, we had this conversation about some game, and I don't remember if it was The Witcher or not. No, the only time I remember getting stuck was I think there was a guy. You go to this town or something, this guy's in like a guard tower. And I couldn't figure out how to get past him or something like that. I think that's the only time I got stuck in The Witcher. But I don't remember a cave with a portal. I don't either. I don't remember that ever happening. I don't even know year. what. Wild Hunt. I was about to say remember... the Zarel part, but that's super far into the game. That's I don't even far. remember entering a cave in that game. Makes me want to go back and play The Witcher 3. I beat the uh, Griffin, and then I got yeah. destroyed by the... Uh... The Griffin is the beginning of the game. By right. the, the people that came out of the water. The ghouls. Drowners. They're yeah, drowners. The drowners. And I was like, oh, I gotta stop this. And I'll, I'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> and I don't and then I never came back? No. <laughs> so I gotta go back. And that's what, like how it is with Dark Souls. Like I got stuck. I was like, I'll just come back to this. And then I haven't gone back yet. The Witcher 3 becomes infinitely easier the more you play it, though. Dark Souls does not. Yeah. That's not I'm true. I'm surprised you played that much Dark Souls at all. The game is really fun once you get the hang of it. Yep. And after playing Sekiro, like I got the gist of like the Bloodborne games. I was yeah. Why don't you play like Bloodborne? Well, I, okay. So I had Bloodborne and I was getting through it really it's, well. It's free and, right now. It's easy. Well, my my PSN ran out and I didn't feel uh, like paying for PSN and Xbox Live, so I just let my PSN like leave. But you can't play games on it without it. Yeah, and I haven't I haven't been able to go back to Bloodborne because of that, and I didn't feel like really rebuying it. Right, good job, PlayStation. But I I would love to jump back into Bloodborne because I was having a lot of fun with that game. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Great, I got really deep into it, and then I stopped playing it for a while, and now I don't remember what the hell I was doing. So when I go back, I just get sad. I think once uh once Demon Souls come out, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna try to play through it. I need to really get back into Dark Souls because I was making huge progress in that game and then something came out and I got, oh, Ghost of Tsushima came out and mm. then I put all my time into that game. Speaking so good. of Caleb, have you yes, played sir. Legends at all? I have not. Don't you have to have PSN? Yeah. I don't have that. Well, that was a great time to purchase PlayStation Network and play Ghost of Tsushima with your friend. But It is. Immediately, <laughs> he just no sold the fuck out of that. <laughs> yeah, he said. Moral, what? Sounds like moral of the story is we just fucking Pokemon's the easiest game to play, and you can just sink hours into it. That's all I get from this now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because like if you're trying to be a grinder in Pokemon, it's going to take a long time to get where you want to go. Not actually, grinding in that game is a lot more easy now than it used to be. It's way more streamlined. What with, with, with the whole. With the whole XP share, you literally put your top not Pokemon even, in. Not even the experience share. It's just like now, the only really thing you have to fucking breed for is just the shiny Pokemon you want. Correct. Uh, because now you can literally catch every evolution. Well, that... I mean, yeah, and the, but that's not what I'm talking about. Like you get the Ditto or whatever with the Destiny Knot. 
and you pass on your uh, the stats you want, you know, and then all you have to do, like you don't don't have to worry about the nature or anything. Oh, you really? Just, oh, yeah. No, you give it a nature mint. You can even give it a, an ability oh, capsule really? and change the ability. It's fucking jeez. Neat. Yeah, they made Sword and Shield way easier than it used to be because I was talking to my boss at work about it, and they don't you don't have anything to grind for because if you catch. I'm just going to use Gen 1. If you catch a Charmander, you can easily catch a Charmeleon and a Charizard out in the wild. So you have no reason to level up your Charmander to get to the next evolutions because you can just I literally mean, walk down the street and you find catch, a Charmander or a Charmeleon. In the wild. There's a lot of Pokemon. Because like, he was even saying, like, there's no reason to level up your Pokemon because you can just walk out there and catch Ooh, the next no. evolution. That's not true. Uh, with a lot of the Pokemon, yes, it is. With a lot of I them, mean, yeah. With I mean, I mean you look at the can do it, but look at all the evolutions. You, be, you can literally catch good, every though, single evolution. I mean, yes, you can catch them, but if you want them to be good, like you want to, to actually battle with them, then well, you need to. Uh, yeah, and I'm not, but I'm saying like overall, with I mean, like sure. versus like Gen One, you put your Charmander. You had to level him up all the way to whatever to get a Charizard. And then if you want to keep that Charizard good, you had to keep him in first. But then none of your other party members are leveling up. So you would constantly have to switch who's your party leader to oh, yeah, level up no, your Pokemon. I, I get what now you're it's literally like, hey, just because we're in your party, we're going to level up. Like oh, I yeah. put my level one Zorua, shiny Zorua in my party. Two days, he's a level 85. Well, I mean, that I get, and I, I didn't that, even have yeah, thing on that on that end. And but, like, if you want to level them up even more quickly, you can just jump into a uh, raid. Den raid, yeah, den raid. Den raid, and get all those candies and. And, and that's what boom. I was doing. And you find rare candies out in the wild, like yeah. nothing. Yeah, I had fifty-one rare candies the other day. Dear lord. Uh, but no, I mean, some people like me. I fucking love playing Pokemon. I love battling. I do not fucking like that super grindy part of it. Like it's. I won't say it's not re- it, it's rewarding for me either way to just end up with what I want. <laughs> like, but I don't want to spend fucking six days trying to EV train something or something. Yeah, no, I'm with yeah, you. I, yeah, I never got into the, like the EV training and anything and I, like that. Like, as far as I ever got was just like breeding for shiny Pokemon. Like, there's no fucking way I'm gonna breed for a, shi- a shiny with fucking uh. With perfect IVs, with, with IVs. perfect IVs, and hidden ability. That's just oh just yeah. Happen. I just want yeah. the shiny just because it looks cool. I exactly. got one shiny that I grinded for myself, and now you can fucking trade for it, like. And it was ability. um, it was the Charizard. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that was the first one I ever did. Yeah, when we got when you get that when you get that one at the end of a sword, I fucking it only took me like three hours to get it too. It took me about a hundred some eggs. Yeah. Uh, but then I, I was trying ahead, to Dev. get I was trying to get shiny uh Litten for Incineroar. And I was I was fucking so many eggs into that I just had to trade for one. Like, that's I what happens so many eggs into I that's have... what happened when I tried to get a fucking toxic toxicity. Mm-hmm. Dude, I tried. I had like hundreds of eggs. I think I'm working on my seventh shiny in sword and shield. And I, I'm currently working on Witten, but I have mm. I have the Galarian Ponyta. Um, Ooh, I've never seen that shiny. It's uh, instead of blue and purple, she's like a teal, green, and white. Ooh, it's it's fucking awesome. I'm looking then at I went, right now. Then I went with Zorua because that's my favorite Pokemon. I think you know, I've caught oh, two. I've caught four shinies in the wild. In on sword or shield, yeah. I have not seen a single one. Four in the wild. I caught, and, I had two almost back to back. I caught a, uh, actually, I don't remember what one was first, but I was, uh, I think I was actually trying to breed the Charmander and I ran into uh, the Seismotoad that hangs out by the, uh, the breeding place. Oh, just, just, yeah. Just right hit it on accident. Uh, yeah, I hit it on accident and it was a shiny and I was like, well, fuck, I have to catch this. <clears throat> and then I went into like the pond right next to it and a quillfish hit me and it was fucking shiny too. I was like, wow, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> See, I was trying to get a Mincinio, but 
I was even doing like the uh, chain battles and still couldn't get one. I don't think that shit's real. But, um, but yeah, I just usually stick to like the hatching part of it. I think, and then I did a a max raid battle and fucking Gothitel. I was just trying to get some candies and Gothitel was shiny. So the only shinies I've caught in the wild was Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. I caught a shiny Rattata, and nice. um, I think I it was you. Omega Ruby. I caught um, a shiny. I can't even remember what it was. Some moth-looking thing. Like, Venomoth? No, I'll look it up. It's in my Pokemon there, home. Or like a Luminoth or something like that. Overall, a uh, big win for Pokemon. Yeah, for big sure. win for Pokemon. After all these years, too. Back, back right. Back. Overall, big win for wasting our time on video games. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I, found uh, a, I found another game, uh, just like a game that I didn't even think I had that many hours in, that I have a shit ton of hours in. Fucking CSGO. Oh, That's- my God. I have 160 hours in that game. Why? There must have been like some no. group that like wanted to play every day. No, like, it uh, was just me because I remember why? playing it, but it was just me. Why? Because like all the other YouTubers were doing it at the time, and I was like, <laughs> I want to be a big YouTuber. <laughs> uh, that's fair. I get that. I just yeah. play Rogue Company now or uh, <laughs> Valorant. I don't know. I'm not playing that either. Or Hyperscape. I'll just stick to Rogue Company. I don't know any of these <laughs> games. <laughs> like Ghost Run. They're, they're shitty free to play shooters. Yep. I only know Hyperscape because Twitch was like, Would you like free emotes? Play Hyperscape now. I'm like, No. Uh, the only one I've heard of yeah. was Valorant because I had a guy that was working for me that was a PC gamer and he's like, Oh, I'm going to try the new Valorant. And I was like, Go you, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah, Bubba. <laughs> you do you, man. Valorant's fine. It's just, I don't, I don't really fuck with shooters that much anymore. Lame. <laughs> I'm old and not good at them. My hand act coordination is is down. Oh, you're no, not even I'm kidding. Great. Speaking of Cody, talk about Wait, what? Talk about what you were trying to tell us. All right. So uh, originally, my whole thing stemmed from I got pretty deep into playing Genshin Impact over the past week. <laughs> Uh, like deep enough to where I got from rank zero to adventure rank 10 in one day. And like the more and more I played it, like the game's great. The game's absolutely fabulous. But holy hell, does it have so many similarities to Breath of the Wild? Like the stamina's the same, the cooking's the same, the world looks the same, your travel is the same, you find fucking Sheikah statues, they just named them something different. Like so much of it is almost exactly the same. So I, I kind of got to thinking like, all right, I mean, that's not a bad thing. It's, you know, you want inspiration from somewhere, but like how many other games kind of not got famous, but worked off of the popularity of other games. And, you know, there's stuff even as far back as like Halo 2's, Halo's multiplayer is essentially Unreal Tournament, even down to the announcer yelling stuff like Killtacular and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So... You know, there's just there's a lot of games that are like Saints Row with Grand Theft Auto Five, essentially the same game. They just took their own spin of it and, you know, made their own IP out of it. CSGO with like everything else that's coming out. I mean, yeah, like uh, if you want to say Fortnite with PUBG, like they just took PUBG, put their own cartoony little spin on it and boom, there you go. No, 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 no. I do not like Fortnite. But um, Fortnite has far more features than PUBG does. It does, but Pub- I mean, PUBG it's came literally... from H one. Yeah, yeah, PUBG, PUBG yeah, okay, H1. maybe that's a better one. But I, I never really got into or saw much about H one N one. It was fun H1 until it H one N one. I don't remember what. See, I don't even know what it's called. H one Z one. Yeah, that's what it said. <laughs> Look, you take the letter, you turn it to the side. It's the same fucking thing. <laughs> oh no, no, they're not the same thing. <laughs> no, same Swan thing. Leave, leave it at that. Just leave it at that. You leave it at it. that. Same thing. My mom had. Oh, wait, is that? <laughs> oh no. H one Z one. Wow. <laughs> is that really the thing for swine flu? <laughs> yes, sir. Wait oh, a minute. You're so inconsiderate. Well, wow. Oh, that's how I get canceled. All right. Well, it, even like. If you look at Call of Duty, because Call of Duty takes shit from other games too. Oh, all the absolutely. fucking time. I mean that. Uh, the, the when or, or the Titanfall came out, and they're like, "Well, now we got to be vertical." Yeah, we can. Wall and run. they com- 
not only did they take it from Titanfall, but they perfected it as well. Yep. And and that's and the then, thing. Uh, the the specialist, which they got from like Destiny. Yeah. Like they they perf- they take they take the options, but then they make them better too. I don't yeah. know if Genshin does it because I haven't played Genshin, but <clears throat> I, I mean I think it does because uh, Genshin also adds a lot to it too. Like you actually have you know guild raids and you know your daily raids to get certain items and stuff like that. Yes, it does have the loot box mentality or the gotcha, I think is what it's actually called. But yeah. so like World uh, of Warcraft. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. But overall, like it's a really fun game. You don't have to put money into it. You can if you want to, but like so is this you, your unpopular opinion Genshin is better than Breath of the Wild? Wow. No, no, Cody. not at all. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not that at all. They're that's two like that's opinion, the thing Cody. is they're two very different games, but just the art style and the like almost all of the mechanics are so close to Breath of the Wild. That you so can let tell me ask you, Let me ask you this, and this is I guess more for Devin. Would you okay. say Ghost of Tsushima copied off Assassin's Creed but then made it better uh no don't hear that i don't i don't even <laughs> i meant to mute my I, mic there's no I don't, I don't even see a correlation there like nothing yeah i don't think, more I'd no, say, I'd say, say, you more i'd say you don't i don't so even think you don't think ghost is, plays like assassin's creed i don't at all uh you aside from being, being able to assassinate assassin's no. people yeah, I mean, you can do that, but like they're not the same. I I don't I just I don't think I'd they're... say I <clears throat> I'd say Devin, what was the last Assassin's Creed game you played? I don't know. I played some Black Flag, probably was the last one. Okay, Ooh. so I would say I would say that Caleb's kind of on the right track there because a lot like Odyssey and Origins okay, and I wanted to play those definitely. The the Egyptian one. What was the Egyptian one? Wasn't that Odyssey? Odyssey. No, that was, that was Origins. Uh... Origins, yeah. origins, origins, and then there was another one, right? Odyssey. What was the... Odyssey was the, you know, Atlantis. Odyssey was the Spartans, and that's the most recent one. Yeah, and then okay. Valhalla so comes out. Th- those two definitely play a whole lot more, like, like how open world. Ghost of Tsushima plays with the open world aspect of it. But I can't even say that they were the ones that started that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, because like when I first picked up Ghost, I was like. This is the most Assassin's Creed game that has come out that is even better than Assassin's Creed. Right, it, it's like definitely it, better. Like, they took Assassin's Creed and made it better than Assassin's Creed. Right. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm just like, even after I beat Ghost, I was still going back and doing other stuff. Whereas, mm-hmm. like, like, in... Because I was having fun with, like, jumping off the buildings and assassinating people and using smoke bombs and literally being stealthy and they took that aspect of assassin's creed that i loved that assassin's creed themselves actually strayed away from because with stuff like odyssey you became more of a brute than you were an actual assassin it's a lot closer to a superhero game damn near yeah because when you watch spartan movies such as the movie 300 they're not creeping through the grass and taking out their enemies silently, <laughs> they're literally on the front line screaming. Yeah, they fucking, they're gonna kill you. Yeah, they're coming to get you. They fucking make the phalanx, so, and you're gonna die. So why would you take that culture and make it an Assassin's, an Creed, Assassin's Creed, game? Creed game? Same with um, Vikings I and think, Valhalla. Well, no, well, I mean shit, they're, they're the... using the same name. Like, but they're using they're the definitely Assassin's string name. from assassinating in like right. a silent they're, manner. They're, they're using straight up like Creed name to get people in the door. Like, well, that and to tell an overarching story. They're tr- what they're trying to yeah. do is show that the 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 lineage of assassins. I had air quotes up there. The lineage of the assassins have been going on since the the Roman era. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Well. I think that's why I like three so much because like you were actually changing history that we all grew up learning. Like you were in the battle. I mean, dude, I got that game on fucking launch. And do you guys remember the launch of that game? Yes. Awful. When they were like, it is this date, and it was the date that you were in. Yeah. Like the year, the time and the date and everything was going to shit. (laughs) And I was like, dude, this is next level. And then I played the game and it was fine. But yeah. yeah, yeah, the game was fine. Like I don't know, I, Connor is probably the weakest of the assassins so far. But oh yeah, he's he was cool thing. But 
you, you don't have to be like hidden to assassinate. You could just straight up shoot somebody in the face to assassinate them. So right. I mean, I guess that's the thing that fine. scares me a it's little fine. bit of, about Valhalla is are they just gonna basically do away with the sneaking aspect? But I hope no. I you, mean, you can still sneak. I've seen no a couple things where you can still you quote can unquote move, sneak. You can move away from the stealth, like as the primary of the way to murder people mm-hmm. and be fine. They're giving you a. Yeah. They're giving you options of ways to play. That's the way I like it, though, because like yeah. I'm not a big stealth guy. Um, and I think that's why me and Metal Gear Solid Five have such a hard time because you oh. you got to be stealthy in that game. Such a be- you really don't have to be. Or either that, or you got Five is where they kind of straight away with from it. Either that, oh, or you got to learn no, how to no. shoot real well oh, with it. Honey. You do have to be able to fucking shoot, but Five Five is super easy, like stealth wise, in a lot of like ways because. More often than not, like once, once every uh, mission, when you drop on the map, there's a gigantic dust storm, and you can just go in and fucking, you know, throw in some thermals and just kill everybody immediately, <laughs> or put them to sleep with drinks, carry someone off. See, I've always leaned more towards the stealth games and stealth ways of playing games, which is why I liked Ghost so much because they gave you literally a suit. That helped your stealth the most, Bruh. And the only I, thing, <laughs> go on, keep going. I was just gonna say, like, once I got that, I literally leveled up that outfit to its highest just so I could stealth the most. Yeah, the only then, thing I didn't like about it was that you got it like at the end of the game. Yeah, but you could still use the Ronin armor that helped a lot. Oh, well, the I, whole game I was Ronin armor. That, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like with the Ronin armor, it helped your stealth the most. Ronin so armor that's what I stuck with until like oh. I could. I, okay, well, I got to go charge into this battle. I'll throw on my heavy armor and then fight in that. But if I have to go take over a camp, I'm throwing on my Ronin armor and just <clears throat> running in. Yeah, I, I don't think that games borrowing from other games is necessarily a bad thing, especially if they end up making it better. I just think it's it's interesting to like go back and look like oh, wow, like, how much of this really was just, like, borrowed from another game? Like, if you I think mean, about it, Watch Dogs and Sleeping Dogs? Is that the other I one? Yeah. I know those were different. <laughs> well, really? <laughs> yeah, they're, I mean, they're I do now, but I, I didn't. Oh, fair. Yeah, it, and that's the thing, and I think, like like I said, like, Saints Row, I think that's the kind of stuff that they played off of. You just want them to be like, oh, this is a GTA now, club. I, yeah, I get, like, Saints Watch Row Watch Dogs too. and Sleeping Dogs are completely different games. Oh, yeah, they yeah. are. Saints Row 2 and Grand Theft Auto were very similar, but yeah, as Saints Row fucking went on, it's not the same. Well, I think it's because wow. they got so much backlash for being a Grand Theft Auto ripoff yeah. that they were like, okay, well, we'll just make this our own thing. And they incorporated aliens and <laughs> monsters and just <laughs> ungodly, God, crazy <laughs> amounts of devil. Saints Row absurdity like- in that game. Saints Row is like the Fast and Furious of video games. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> the more it went on, the more it was just like, yeah, we can fuck with this and still sell some games. <laughs> yep. We're we're at the point though where like you have you almost have to borrow from something. Like oh, yeah. yeah. Not There's no such thing as an original idea anymore. Well, no matter a... what no matter what form of media you're in, movies, uh books, anything has to borrow some have some and kind of inspiration. I'm I'm in the I'm in the camp where like if you can do it better, fucking go ahead and do it. Yep. Well, yep. here's the thing. Uh, Dota 2 put out the the first thing of like an idea of a battle pass, and Fortnite yeah. like just blew that up, and now yep. every yep. game's got like a battle pass in it. Basically, and speaking of Dota, that's like the not the originator of start like starting something and people stealing everything from it. Dota 2 is the originator of MOBAs, which it's funny because they both have such like different communities, but they're the same game. But what do you mean? Like the people that like Dota are do not usually like League of Legends, but right. But it's the same fucking game. <laughs> yeah, it's the same exact thing, just slightly different mechanics. But yeah, like uh, our buddy Levi, he's one of them that he likes League of Legends, but Dota's his favorite. And there are plenty of other people that are like, you either I mean, love Dota or you hate. I prefer Dota. League over Dota, but I don't play either. I played Do- League for a little bit, but I I played for League for a little bit, but I more like the lore. I like learning about all of the characters. Like I don't really like the the game style itself. Mobas just aren't my thing. But like seeing the lore and the actual world built for the characters is just so cool. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a cool world. Yeah, for sure. 
especially since I mained Annie and Annie's story is so fucking cool. Overall, big win for game stealing. <laughs> <laughs> well, like Devin said, though, if you can steal it and make it better, go for it. Like I think that's good. I mean, that, that's how I feel. I know. I know a lot of people don't feel that way. I'm with you there. Um, what is that new game that's free to play? Uh, you can use like magic and stuff. It's like a battle royale with magic. Spellbound? Spellbreak. Uh, Spellbreak. Yeah. If yeah. you look at Spellbreak's art, it is a almost identical copy of breath of the wild it really is yeah somebody and that's, showed me gameplay and i was like that looks like fortnite had sex with breath of the wild <laughs> dude, dude go look at some gameplay videos for genshin you will think the same exact thing like yeah i thought well, genshin better was... yet just watch one of the trailers that pop up on youtube when you're watching <laughs> yep. it yep and yeah, you'll like, see everything i saw rogue, it and i was like road company's dude, fun though art, or not road company's art, art, breath of the wild yeah and you know that's fine i mean breath of the wild is definitely something that you should learn from because they did a lot of things right in that game big success like and they removed the whole weapon breaking system because that was did shit. They? yeah well they not were. in breath of the wild oh, in I, gonna, it's not yeah, I need to get back into it because that's one of the reasons i stopped playing breath of the wild is because yeah I oh you have the master the like best sword ever well it breaks in 10 hits so you know yeah well, i thought it, I, I didn't think I heard it didn't break. It doesn't it break, breaks, but it, you can like, only use it so often. It has to yeah, recharge. Like it, I was gonna say you have to let it recharge. Yeah, I never got you know. past the first mythical beast, so I don't know. But did really? <laughs> I, don't I, I, I tried uh, real hard with that game. Oh man, I got them all. I got past the elephant. Was on my way to the next one, and got sidetracked with another game that came out. The water blight. Uh, no. I don't remember which one I was after. I was gonna say it's. I mean, it's Zelda, so you can technically do them in any order. But right. But yeah, I went for the elephant, got the elephant, and then that, that was it probably the easiest one. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's fine. I think it's needed, and you know, we're in 2020, having an original idea is really hard. So, uh, Devin. Hey. How about how's that new Pokemon DLC? Uh, well, firstly. Pokemon came out with the DLC, Crown Tundra, on like the 17th. Okay. It came out at like 9 p.m. And it's fantastic. The only thing I haven't done is the double battles in uh, the uh, the Pokemon League. I haven't done that yet. Oh, that that's really fun. I just did that. The uh, So what I'm super impressed with is like the whole Crown Tundra. It's super, like you get lost in it. I was... I spent like the right when I downloaded it. I spent all the time just exploring and all that before I had to like do the mission stuff. So I explored. There's part, you know, there's snow because Crown Tundra or whatever. There's also not snow. There's you know grassy areas and shit like that. Uh, but it, it's just it's fucking gigantic. It's way bigger than I don't know, like Isle of Armor and any. Oh, the, uh, I think it's double armor. the size of Isle of Armor. Yeah, I mean it's huge, and <clears throat> uh, it like I think I added two hundred eight Pokemon, maybe two hundred something like that. The only bad thing about that Pokedex is, uh, well, I actually don't think it added that many Pokemon because it recycles some Pokemon from the other dexes in the game. But it's still huge. It's still super fun. Uh, the there's not much story to it. You're just you kind of go on like these legendary pokemon hunting missions which is cool you have to do you have to do certain things to get like the the reggies like to get registeel you have to whistle at the door i got stuck on that i you had to, to google get, how to get in you have <laughs> to get cryagonal at the beginning at the the number one in your party to get regice and i don't remember what i had to do for regirock but that was the first one i did and was super easy so uh red rock you have to have a pokemon holding an everstone oh yeah i put everstone on my weavile so i could get in there and then i i i caught i got reggie drago that's the one i picked so i still need reggie lucky to get the 100 reggie gigas i have the reggie lucky so like right at the beginning another cool part is there's this new thing you've been able to do the dynamax raids now you can Dynamax Adventures, what the new one's called. So you go into this little cave, 
and this doctor or scientist or whatever standing like at this entrance and she's like ah oh, oh my god there's a new adventure come catch some legendary pokemon so you're like fuck yeah i need to catch some legendary pokemon and you just <clears throat> you know uh you start with suicune and then you can talk to peony's daughter peony is the guy he's like the other main character in the game you talk to his daughter or he's the main character in crown tundra really you can talk to him or talk to his daughter and she'll be like, I saw so-and-so down there, like Cresselia or something. You go talk to the scientist again and you can pick which Pokemon you want to see at the end of the, the adventure. Um, or you can just do it randomly. The only problem I've had with it is I tried to play it with people and the people I've played with are, I, I don't know, stupid or selfish or <laughs> it's got to be one of the two because we could not beat it because Okay, so you beat a Pokemon, and there are four of you, and only one of you can pick the Pokemon that uh, you take onto the next Pokemon to battle. And it's just like, everybody votes for it. One person randomly gets it, instead of like somebody who has like barely no health getting the Pokemon, and it'll go to somebody who had a Pokemon with full health because they're bastards. And you only get, you get four, uh, four lives, basically. And so you run out fucking out of the out of the adventure uh i think the i mean that's basically it and then you, you make it to the very end and you get the legendary which can be like any legendary i guess i haven't seen one it's not and i think the shiny rates are upped um and I, I also think it's like a 100 percent catch rate so you can get it in whatever ball you want yeah it's a 100 mm. percent catch rate and it's any pokemon from gen one all the way up the only pokemon or the only legendaries that are not in it are mythical pokemon through like events such as arceus shaman mew celebi people like that oh, okay. i have i have one question about pokemon this didn't have to do with dlc but doesn't have to um do, does that is zashian and all them they're not uh 100 catch rate right no 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 we're i'm only talking about in the uh no uh, i that's what i'm that's just what i'm asking uh is that what about eternus do you know no, not, no Pokemon are 100% catch rate outside of what we're talking about. Gotcha, I wasn't sure, because I know... It's, uh, it's just in this adventure. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Because otherwise, mm. people wouldn't want to do it fighting all the way through this adventure to get to the Legendary, just for the Legendary to kick out and run. Right. So, it, yeah, to keep you keep going, they would have to make it a 100% catch about rate. If, if you lose the adventure, uh, you can go back and do it again, because its name will be on the sci- <clears throat> scientist list. But uh, also, the new legendary Pokemon, the Calyrex, what horse did you pick? Oh, they added new legendaries for this? Just, yeah, there's well, two yeah, of them. Yeah, I mean, there, there's technically like five new legendaries with the birds and stuff. Well, oh, but, no, and then, and then the Reggie, so fucking seven new ones. But I did, I did Spectre. I, I did the Ice Horse. So Spectre is um they're saying that combo is completely OP. Um I was, yeah, he, I was looking at it. He he oh, becomes psychic ghost, which is insane anyway. But he has a, a good fucking type. He has he, a uh, move called Astral Barrage that will basically one shot KO anybody. Jeez. Yeah, I was uh I was fighting it when it Oh god damn it. You know, like when you go to catch Calyrex and the horse at the same time, uh, it was using like this ice spear and was like almost one shotting everything. Like I had a Weavile. Its stats are like great. I mean, they're great. I, I maxed out IVs and stuff and EVs. And it was like one shotting an ice type with a fucking ice move. It was insane. <laughs> like it's super yeah. strong. I think it's a, it's base. Not as base, but like if it's maxed out EV trained, its attack stat is over. It's four hundred something, so Jeez. it's pretty strong. And I know the ghost type is also four hundred for special he's, attack, though. He's the first Pokemon, or he's the first legendary Pokemon that I've had to use a Master Ball on because I could not catch it with another ball. <laughs> and it's probably <clears throat> Gold and Silver. I did not use a Master Ball. I got it down. I had a crawl daunt and I got it down to 
I don't want to say I got it down to like one HP because it has Giga Drain. Yeah. But Ew. so I got it down to red and I switched into uh, Dragonite that had Thunder Wave. So it paralyzed it. So I paralyzed it and then I just threw repeated balls at it. I think I ended up catching it with an Ultra Ball. See, I tried. I tried some Vermeer balls, but that shit just was. Those there. are a joke. I always sell those right back. But I battled him. I think six times. Had him in the red every time, and I would either accidentally kill him or he would wipe my team, and I would have to start all over. It's hilarious. I only battle. I battled him one time. I just stalled him out as long and as I, I could. I was just getting frustrated, so I finally threw a master ball. Can I just say, I'm very happy. That Pokemon is finally not fine, uh, but yeah, finally because DLC has been out for a long time. Is finally catching up with the trend instead of putting out like how uh, Ruby and Sapphire had Emerald or X and Y had X, yeah. Super X or Super Y or whatever the fuck. And Black and just, White too. Re- yeah. Well, no, Black and White Two is a completely different game with a completely different story. It was In just a sense, yeah. Um, but... I'm just happy that they're like instead of putting out a brand new game that you have to pay $60 for like, Hey, give us 30 bucks. Here's two additional DLCs with what? Six, six, eight hours of content mm, each. R- roughly. I'd say probably Isle of armor was maybe like four. If you rush through it. I mean, right. yeah, you can speed through Isle of armor, but the thing about crown tundra is like, there's so much to look at. Yeah. I mean, you have, there's just, I don't know so much to look at. It's great. It's really fucking amazing. Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just happy that they're doing that. As it's almost to, like like Pokemon's turning into an uh, like turning into an actual RPG, right? About time. I mean, yeah, I guess, yeah. I mean, that's the way I've I've played them since I started playing them. So they are the definition of a JRPG, really. I don't know if there's uh, plenty to do, but I mean, there's a lot to do, and you still. Like all the cool shit to catch. I don't know, man. I mean, I mean it, they, we we're talking about stealing shit from other things. Final Fantasy straight stole the idea for the not stole it, but Final Fantasy and Pokemon are essentially the same game. Just Pokemon's a little bit more simple. You know, I actually started playing Final Fantasy because of Pokemon. Like somebody used that analogy, and because I was somebody asked me if I'd ever play Final Fantasy, I said no. Like I'm not all mm-hmm. about those type of games. And the um, one guy that I used to work with literally looked at me and goes, do you play Pokemon? I said, yeah, I love Pokemon. He goes, is that a turn-based game? He goes, is it an attack and wait? I said, yeah. He goes, it's exactly what Final Fantasy is. Mm-hmm. Handed me Final Fantasy X, fell in love with that fucking game. Yeah, so amazing. Imagine so that. much, So much time into that. And it was literally just like playing Pokemon. You had to play in your moves and just hit and wait. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I there's a, there's a reason Pokemon is the highest fucking grossing media franchise of all time. Pikachu. No, you. because it's just <laughs> amazing. I mean, right. It is. The I mean, thing, and I think I think the next games, uh, not next. I mean, the next games, but like next gen is what I'm trying to say. When they've like been able to sink some real time into the Switch or whatever comes next, I think. They will all be more like Crown Tundra, like in the games as a whole. And also, another thing I fucking love is that in Crown or not Crown Tundra, but Sword and Shield, I think they've covered like almost every, well, not they haven't covered every type, but almost every type of Pokemon gym leader. Like you got Peony mm-hmm. in the DLC; he was a former Steel type leader. Yep, which is I think some amazing. What I would love to see. Because I fucking I'm a soul silver and heart gold mark is bringing back like all those gym leaders like heart gold soul silver did, where you can just fucking like battle them in the the dojo or whatever. So Dude. what I've what I've always said about Pokemon is the number one Pokemon Pokemon game I've always wanted to play is kind of steal what they did with uh, gold and silver. Is where you can play both regions. I was just but about I, to say that, dude. I, I was want literally you to about start to say in Can- I want you to start in Kanto and literally work your way through every single okay. generation. See, uh, I mean, that's what everybody wants, really. But you have to think about how long that would take. Mm-hmm. Who cares? It's Pokemon. <laughs> I think what I, I did this today. 
So, like, what I want you to do is when you get some free time, or, I mean, you can do it now since you probably have the internet in front of you, just, like, pull up a map of Sword and Shield and DLC and look at how big that fucking map is. Yeah. It is. It, it's bigger than you think it is. It's fucking huge. And I was hoping, like, when the game came out, they were talking about you get the eight main gems, but there were also, like, mini gems that were in, like, mainline gems to win badges from. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, that's like in the lore, I guess. But I was hoping that would be in the game because I thought that shit would be amazing too. Just or maybe to go fucking train at to piggyback off what off what Caleb said. Maybe not even play through them in the sense of get all the badges from them, but you just be able to have the option to go there would be cool. No, I get it and I agree, but I just like think that is that's a lot to put. I really game. don't. And I mean, really don't I, think so. Not with how big like well, GTA. That's what, that's what I'm about to say. That's what I was about to say. Like, gotcha. If, if you would on the switch, I think it's probably a lot, but if you dumbed it down or if like the next system, depending on how much power it has, I don't see why not. And if nobody complained about like graphics, like graphically what they look like, what I think would be super cool is to play through them. Like, as they looked almost and just carry your Pokemon and have them over. upgrade each time. Like you start in, I would not say start like in the original red and blue and green, like those graphics, but like fire red and leaf green gra- graphics, mm-hmm. then heart gold, soul silver graphics, then you know, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, so on. I think that I, th- I think that could work. I think either way could work because I mean, Skyrim fits on a switch cartridge. Why can and Skyrim is an infinitely bigger map, but there's a lot of data with all the Pokemon at the same time. Yeah. And see, and that's but. the thing is like, even if you start in Kanto, I'm not saying throw, like you play every single game. Like you could mix up the Pokemon like they did with I Sword will. and Shield. Like, mm-hmm. like, oh, hey, here's a couple from Gen 1. Here's a couple from Gen 6, like all blended in together. It would make the game more interesting because then you could have a different approach on gym leaders. Like, oh, hey, I'm stuck with this Charmander fighting Brock or something like that. I'm stuck but, with this reboot fighting Brock. Yeah, yeah, you could easily just like, oh, hey, go out in the wild, catch something from Gen 4 and use him. I was playing this uh, ROM hack. And just to like talk about playing a big Pokemon game, I was playing this ROM hack that has like four regions in it. Which I'm one? like... I can't remember. It's something platinum. Have you uranium? Or huh? Uranium? No, I said platinum. Oh well, I mean, I that's the it's building off of that system, though. It's not. Yeah. It's. Have you played the ROM hack? That's like it's like a Pokemon Red f- six eighty one or eight fifty one or some shit like that. No. Has like every Pokemon that's ever been brought out in in the game, like up to Gen. What's are we in Gen Seven right now? Yes. Okay, up to Gen Six nice. on a, on Fire Red, and it's ridiculous because there's so many fucking legendaries. And back in Fire Red, you were back in Red. You couldn't catch legendaries in a Pokeball or anything like that. So, like, if you run into a if you run into a legendary, either they're gonna fuck you up or you gotta run. We're also on, <laughs> we're on we're on Gen Eight, by the way. Gen Eight, are then we? Gen, Damn. Then Gen Seven. I, I like to I like to act like Sun and Moon don't count because those are those are the worst Pokemon games that's ever I, been I could as a one Pokemon game I couldn't finish. Same, I, got, like, I, got to the I literally eye. never <laughs> finished it. I just tried like last month to finish them. It's I, so I got to the second so island and I was like, I have twenty minutes of gameplay and four hours of talking cutscenes. <laughs> I'm yep. done with this. I watched and, the anime, and that's yeah. why. Um, that's why I really like what they did with Sword and Shield being able to catch every legendary is you can get all the legendaries from Sun and Moon and without having to play those stupid games. Oh, bad. Poor yeah, Sun and I Moon. They tried. Yeah, that's big a loss for Sun and Moon. Overall big loss for Sun and Moon. I don't know, shit. Big loss for I don't Sun know anything about the Ultra Beast, really. I don't either. I literally traded for him on Pokemon Home right before Crown Tundra came out and then Crown Tundra came out and was like, hey, guess what? We're adding all of these. And I was like, Cool. I still don't have many of them. I, I know they're expensive Pokemon cards. <laughs> no, they're not. I thought they were. Some of them. There I are there's... expensive Pokemon cards, yeah. No, no, I thought some of the Ultra Beast ones were Fuck some of the expensive no. ones. Like what? Oh, really? Cephalon 
was probably the most expensive and it was like ten dollars i can't think of one off the uh, top okay of my head it's so funny to me that they're like because correct me if i'm wrong Devin, but like the most expensive pokemon card in the world is like not even usable in tournaments like they're not even good yeah no it's yeah. a japanese pikachu uh, that only came out in Japan. He's like no. floating on balloons or something like that. It's worth like I a mean, hundred grand. There's there are a bunch. Okay, Pokemon card. We we can get into this if you guys want. But nobody. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll we'll talk about this next week on the podcast because we're already like an hour and a half in. Pokemon card prices vary very much, and they probably aren't worth as much as you think they are. We literally yeah. talked like, about uh, this two episodes ago. Yeah, we definitely did. I, I, I just remember Charizard. Nobody listens. Charizard's like super expensive right now, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yes. You both, most most versions of Charizard are most. Yeah, some are pretty cheap. Yeah, I still remember the fucking Pawn Stars episode where a dude comes in selling his Charizard <laughs> collection. <laughs> the yeah, funniest this thing. Shit, this shit wasn't worth. Well, we're a big win for Pokemon. So Good, good job, Pokemon. Big Way to keep it going. Thirty years in, Pokemon. yeah. Go, good for you, Game Freak. It's almost now. Pokemon twenty five is next year, February twenty five years. Po- well, it's a couple months away. Before we Pokemon. move on to the next topic, let's all guess the next Pokemon game that's going to come out. See, they stuck like the colors. name or Gen like, Four, Gen Four remake. You think Gen Four? I mean, that's all I see. I'd be happy with it. it I sense. want black I and white want... remake though. Do what? I mean, I don't give... say, yeah. I what? don't think it's gonna happen, but I, I like don't the see name, a remake so... coming. I want Pokemon Let's Go Johto. No, you fucking don't. I that really do. Game I would love sucks. another style of gold and silver. But... Dude, I would I'd take a remake of fucking gold and silver. I really would. I Our gold and so... silver are my favorite. So for my birthday. I told Alyssa I wanted a Game Boy Color and Pokemon Gold or Silver so I could go back and play the original Gold and Silver like nostalgic times. And she fucking did it. So I have a Game Boy Color and the original Gold and Silver that I have to play under a light because it has (laughs) no backlighted screen. I have have my Game Boy Color and I have it in a I have a gold I don't know what they were called, like a little satchel for my for for the Game Boy, well, carrying and it's case. Like, yeah, it's Pokemon Gold themed. It's got a holo on it. I oh, do man, not. I have, remember that. I do not have gold or silver though. Did you get uh one with the new battery in it? What do you mean? The game, the game cartridge. Oh, I don't know. So you, so you can save it. <laughs> can you save it? I I don't know. She hasn't given it to me yet. <laughs> yeah, you definitely want to test that out first before you play for like 13 hours and then realize you can't save. God. No shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Well, yeah, because like oh. some of the 64 cartridges, too, you got to try and fuck with them a little bit because they just don't work anymore. I can't imagine it'd be too expensive to replace, so. No. That's, not, that's pretty cheap. Oh, I remember what I was going to talk about other earlier. Does anybody me- remember the, uh, the the Tenchi games, I think it is? Ten- Tenchu? Is it? Tenchu. Tenchu, yeah. 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 I want another one of those, or like Ninja Gaiden, something along those lines. I fucking love Ninja Gaiden. N- Ninja Gaiden was like what got me into that style of game. And Are you then... talking about like PS3 Ninja Gaiden? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Cody, I'm fucking with you. So good. I never because they had the like mm. Lunar Edition or something like that, and you got like the Moon of the Staff, the Staff of the Moon, or some shit like that. And it was so fucking could... powerful. It's just the shit you did on that game. Like you fought on at least Sigma. You fight on a. Uh, on a blimp, you fight yep. some lichens. It's yep. fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, so good. Yeah, I want shit like that. And like Tenchu had to like sneak around and you know Tenchu was some... hard as fuck when I was. It was, kid. but it was so much fun. Not for me. I just kept dying. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there. But yeah, where's all those games? I want those back with all the resurgence of all the samurai shit and ninja. Uh, shit. I'm those. so hyped for fucking that Wukong game that you showed me, Devin. Oh, I am too. That shit looks, oh, cool. looks good as fuck. I wish I was shown things. You don't like well, if you would have been my friend back when I shared that, you would have seen it. <laughs> when was that? A couple Yesterday. months ago. <laughs> yeah, no. Cody, if you would have just been my friend at any point in either one of our lives, <laughs> I'd share things with you. I feel, like, I feel like Cody thinks that you don't want to be his friend, and that's why he never tried to be your friend. Oh, why? one million percent. Why? Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, in fairness, back in those days, I was absolutely the outcast no one gave a shit about. <laughs> How are so, you, an you just had herpes when we met. That was the only problem. <laughs> okay. God, when we when we met Ohio for the first time, the <laughs> ugliest the worst fucking people I had ever seen. <laughs> the f- the most Caleb was a fucking mutant. Uh, <laughs> Cody had herpes all over his face. Uh, Jesus I'm Christ. sure. I'm sure you and Stacy didn't make a good first impression either. Spitting fucking animal crackers. In the I was gonna say the first thing I oh, got from you got and Stacy was a <laughs> animal cracker spit from one mouth to the next, <laughs> and Stacy breaking ten feet away. Truck. You guys and I thought like Stacy was a girl. Yep. Do you know who took me to see B Snow for the first time? Who? Fucking X Cal. <laughs> he was he was like he was like let's go to fucking Kroger and see B Snow. First time I met Indiana, I got I hit in the head with a shovel by X Cal. Oh yeah. <laughs> First time I met Indiana, I learned to bump. Snow was like, I've been talking to some dudes on the internet. One of them wants to come out and wrestle, and I booked him with you, Cody. And I was like, Yeah, all right. And it was in the middle of a blizzard, and we decided to just do a whatever match. And yeah, fucker. Hit me in the head with a shovel. Born to bump. I think the <laughs> fucking hell. I think the first time I met Snow was at Beach's Barn. Wow, oh, Beach. In the mid, at just, like fucking one o'clock in the morning. I just love that I met Snow working at Kroger. I know it's so funny. So you and met him at home, and here, fifteen years later, but you can still there. see him at Kroger. I used to work there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure like 80% of the friend group has worked in a Kroger. I love working at Kroger. Man. <laughs> I am not at all paid to say this. I love Kroger. In this, or in this group chat right now, 80% of the people in here have worked at Kroger before. <laughs> Literally. So, most of them still do. Months. You make a lot of money. Oh, and it's more than 80. Oh, no, yeah, I guess it is 80. Kroger pays the bills, bud. Kroger I'm not used to having bills. five. Kroger fucking did not pay my bills at all. Because you were a bad employee. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't. They just don't pay the deli well. Yeah, right. I mean, made like $20 you... an hour. Not me. <laughs> and they if also want to be full time. Oh, uh, well. If you want to get technical, when I was a merchandiser, most of my stores were Kroger. So I guess but you did you work that. for Mr. Nobody Kroger. liked Seven Up. No, he worked no. for people like me and Caleb. <laughs> I wasn't going to mention who I worked for, Snow. Fuck seven up. Yeah. I agree. Seven up fucking sucks. They have Dude, one box in the corner, know. and that's all they're allowed. Seven yeah. up. Yeah, that's all they pepper. sell. Well, your guys' story is a different district than what I was in, though. Somebody's gonna yell at me in the comments because I said seven up sucks, and I can't wait for it. Probably. It's gonna be that one. Well, well, I agree with you. I'll be your shield <laughs> with that one. <laughs> Thank you. I will die on this fucking. I will too. I'm I worked for them, and like. Outside of A and W, I don't. Oh well, and like the Blackberry Ginger Ale, I don't give a shit about the rest. Root beer sucks. I've okay. My store. No. I've worked at my store for a year and not once seen the Seven Up rep. <laughs> Never. I see Coke and Pepsi in there all the time. Hey, Never seen. Uh, the I wish you guys could have seen my Pepsi rep. <laughs> Honestly, they probably don't show up, Caleb. What a they hilarious! What they know what they think they should sell. It's because they, they don't them. sell anything. That's why they don't need to come in. <laughs> well, that too. Overall, big win for Kroger because I love working there. Yeah, yeah, um, I love Kroger. So let's talk about some games that were made into movies. Oh, yay! I will list some, and then I'll go about talking. Okay. <clears throat> yes. We got yes. Mortal Kombat, Tomb Raider, Amazing, Warcraft, Sonic the Hedgehog, Assassin's Creed, Street Fighter, Max Payne, Doom, Super Mario Brothers, Need for Speed. Rampage, Prince of Persia, and Resident Evil. There's probably more, but you know, I couldn't think of any more. It's <laughs> funny because a few of those mentioned the movies are nothing like the game. Most of them. So what, almost so, all of them. Um, why 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 are the games um usually don't translate well? Why do you think that? I think that the reason that games don't that those kind of games don't translate well is because the stories and a lot of them are so simplistic that they try to they try to stretch them into a full feature movie that doesn't make sense or or vice versa the games are so so 
like intricate and they try to shrink it down into a two hour movie. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, because like Resident Evil trying to put all of the lore into one one and a half hour movie like eh. hey, Resident Evil was fun as fuck when I first saw it. For the, oh, yeah, for the, for the for the first option that I said, the reason I say that is like like a Sonic game. Yeah, there's a story to it, but nobody's really playing that game for a story. Right. Um, Sonic's super fun. Well, and the, also, the Sonic movie was fine. Yeah, I, I like the it. Sonic movie. It was amazing. Uh, yeah, Plus, I, I love Jim like Carrey. So mm. I popped. I popped real fucking hard for Tails at the end of it. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yep. I think my favorite movie, like game to movie translation, is uh, Detective Pikachu. Yeah. So that one is good, but I mine's mean, still Mortal Kombat. I never played the game Detective Pikachu, but I me neither. With the- also, Pokemon the first movie, fucking amazing. So yes, that's yeah. different. That's I, so I don't. Different. That's not that. different. That's we can't not really different. count anime. That's not different. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. The anime was made because of the game, so they totally fucking it's count. doesn't count. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was not said in the rules. You just said games that turned into movies. I literally mentioned every single one of them as live action. All right. Yeah, live oh, action. Oh, oh, oh. Well, you forgot. Monster. But as always, you guys have to turn it into anime. No, he said Monster Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he yeah, said, he said Monster Hunter, Hunter but as a game, I'm fucking That's excited later. for it. I can't. I don't care how bad it's gonna be. I, oh, fuck, I mean, Diablo looks so fucking cool, dude. The, that's the part that makes me sad. It looks so cool, but why are they in there with a damn hunter? Has Ti? Because you're not the hunter. The people in there aren't the hunters. They're just There's fucking fucking army, army men. Yeah, that are fucking trying to stray off or fucking get rid of a Diablos. You're but, like. Why did we have to bring the real, the real, the real world into it? Like, because why that's not... how it is in the game. If you look at the lore, that they're there. Like, that's they're there. There are people with guns in Monster Hunter. Well, Just... yeah, guns, but not fucking Humvees. No, <laughs> Cody, you don't, Cody, you don't fucking listen. <laughs> they are in the. They are there. That is a part of the lore. Is it? That, yes. Okay, well then that's there fair. are there are normal people that are like military people that go out and try to when the hunters can't do what they need to do because the hunters essentially are superheroes, right? Like they have super strength and shit like that. Right. Like, yeah, the, the, there are normal people that are like out there doing just as much to try to keep the world safe from these monsters. Okay, so then that's fair. I just want to, to bring it back. I, I agree with Chongo. I think Jacob with. Yeah, <laughs> Jacob. With <I> redacted. <laughs> um, hey, it wasn't Devin this week. A lot of the games have so much story because we can go to our previous topic how much we've put hour wise into video games. How mm. are you supposed to cram that many hours into a movie? Right. right? Like, I'm, I'm kind of glad, even though I've never played The Witcher, it was, I think it was better off as a series than it would have been a movie. I agree. Well, yeah, but, like, that's the whole thing. I think what what people need to do and look for in video game media is not, I hope this is exactly like the game and they fit all this lore into this shit. Correct. I think they just need to make it and be like, hey, this is about to be some fun shit. You know all about the game already. I don't need to talk about it. Let's one, like of the, it. one of the things The Witcher did really well is they didn't base it off of part of the game. Like, it's n- nothing in that uh show ha- happened in the game uh it's based I, off the first book which is a, a some a, like a compromise or like a big thing of short stories about Geralt. yeah they they touch on things that have like are talked about in the game but that's that's it and i'm fucking cool with it yeah i will say the exception to that though is probably silent hill because that was well, very real to the game <clears throat> there are some silent hills that are god awful so. Well, I mean, yeah, sure, but I mean, they also tried to make Wii games, so yeah, no. But like, the movie was so damn good. But like with the Prince of Persia movie, I absolutely love that movie, and it didn't go anywhere because a lot of people didn't like it because it wasn't exactly like the game. Is that the Jake Gyllenhaal one? Yeah. Well, okay. that's because people have this bar set up as like their game is like so great, then so the movie's got to be exactly. <clears throat> As exactly, great, and same with more. like the Tomb Raider. The new Tomb Raider was absolutely phenomenal. I loved. I that haven't movie. seen it. I, I loved it. It was phenomenal, and it was actually really close to the remake of the Tomb mm-hmm. Raider that they did. Um, Rise of the Tomb the, Raider, just like the Tomb Raider, whatever. Um, 
Is it but based off that story, or is it a different story? It's it's actually based off that story. Her ship okay. crashes. Okay. She ends up on this island with like mysterious forces, and the story from the game and the movie are very very similar. Actually, a great movie, but I don't think it's going to get a sequel because it's got the problem delayed indefinitely. But, but like oh. like Snow says, because a video or a video game movie is not exactly like the video game. People just discard it as crap. Like Assassin's that's Creed. I'm, that's it's what I'm worried Creed. about for Uncharted. The new Uncharted that's coming hey, out. You I'm, saw, really... saw Spider Man in there looking just like Nathan Drake. So... I know, dude. He really did. Dude, I'm excited for Tom Holland to play. All right, Nathan so going into the next segment of that um, movies that are coming out soon, we got Monster oh, Hunter. <laughs> okay, that you guys uh, have been, you know, fast forwarded into. Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Love you. The new. Oh, there's a new Rainbow Six movie that's coming out called Without Remorse. Oh, really? Like, really? I didn't, I didn't even I've know never about even heard that. Of that. Um, the Uncharted movie, of course. Um, Eli Roth is going to be directing a Borderlands movie. Oh, no shit! Day. And nice. they, oh, they are oh, actually uh, that's rebooting that's the um, Resident Evil movies as well. Yes. Hmm. Um, rebooting? Yeah. Mm. With Mila? No, it's actually a whole new cast. Like they're going to be using. Um, Chris Redfield, all, oh. all those types of characters. Like I just saw it on Twitter. Um, they just cast a guy as Chris. I don't remember who it was, but they cast a guy as Chris. Give me before, a Leon. Or before we go any further, I just want to say <clears throat> because I totally forgot and I'd even seen it until I thought about how much B Snow played it one weekend I was there. But I went and saw Warcraft in the theater. Oh, I love and, that movie, dude. And I fucking just forgot all about it. I actually love that movie. I've heard it I think so I good. like it. Go ahead. I, I, I was going to say, I heard it so good, and I got maybe 10 minutes in before I kind of fell away from it. But people are <laughs> saying the movie is actually amazing. See, I think I like it so much because I wasn't a big WoW player before I watched the movie. I started I playing the game. I started playing the game because I watched that movie and liked the movie so much. Interesting. Okay, it's Devin. Like more falling in love. Devin, what? here yeah. you'll, you will. I think we'll like the the Resident Evil reboot. It's following Claire, Jill, Chris, Wesker, uh, Leon, and Neil. No so, Anna Wong. No Anna. Not yet, at least. <clears throat> well, but I think still, who, following the actual Wesker storyline, I'm I'm perfectly happy with that. Well, the one that like ends in five. Dude, yeah. I've never played a Resident Evil game before. You haven't you even been spoiled, so no. Either way, <laughs> Wesker's Wesker's the bad guy in all of them. So, <laughs> right. It just <laughs> to what degree is he the bad guy? Is pretty much all that changes. Snow. Were there any other movies that are coming out? Um. Yes. Uh, Sony has confirmed there's a live action Final Fantasy coming. What? Oh. Yes. Yeah, I'm ready to fuck <laughs> with that. <I> need. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Oh, okay. I need an a on. Is there any information on it? Like what? What? Like genre are they following? Please, it's Final Fantasy X. Please be Final Fantasy X. Mm, not, 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 not sure about that one. You know. I mean, it's. You I know, know I'm gonna Google so. that. Shit. You Google I, that. Um, still a Minecraft movie coming out here in a few years. Yeah. Call is that Duty. live action? I'm not sure. I'll just. I hope would so. Minecraft be live action. I hope so. <laughs> Yeah, you've seen that Kanye West uh, um, video, right? <laughs> Stop it. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Just cardboard box people. I love it. Showtime's going to have the Halo series coming out whenever. Ooh. I was going nice. to say, that's been watched, talked about since the Halo movie. On, uh, have you guys seen the Halo movie on Netflix? TV series. No. Uh, the, uh, Halo yeah. Legends. I, I own it. Know. Fucking hilarious. I don't know about a Final Fantasy live action. Like, it's just so. The story's so in depth. How do you make a movie out of that? So be, is, I feel like it'd have to be a trilogy. Plus, like the action, like what are they gonna do? Smack a dude, then stand back and wait for another dude to smack <laughs> them? Like, well, have you, have you, you, play, have you played Fifteen? Yeah, yeah. Where you can kind of free roam. The action's different now. The 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 fighting's different now. It's it's. I uh, actually awesome. disliked Fifteen because of that. I actually wanted the turn base back. Once same, I so doing... fucking, fucking same. I oh, I loved Fifteen's gameplay. You I loved the did. gameplay. I just hated the the combat was so simplistic. 
which it's not was Final Fantasy. Mash B, and that's your only button. Mash right. B to melee, and then your the more times you hit it, the bigger combo you did. But it was it didn't feel like a fa- Final Fantasy game to me it's because you couldn't do. Strategic. Yeah, you couldn't do the summons. You weren't turn based. You didn't yeah, have to rely that, on your other characters. That like me off. The summons were fucking awful. I, I could. I still. I've summoned some of the gods. No idea how I did it. I still can't I've, figure out how they, to do it. They just happen. They're just, yeah. It's like almost random. And I've only ever summoned the fucking like Zeus guy. Yeah, with I don't giant fist. The thunder guy. Yeah, I've only summoned one dude by accident, and I couldn't figure out how to do it. Yeah, no, not possible. Uh, the way that I've always thought about the turn-based fighting is I think of it the same way as D&D, where each turn is six seconds. Yep, same. So, like, just putting it in that aspect just makes it feel like, okay, yeah, there's actually a lot more action going on. They're just slowing it down so you can, you know, understand what's think going about on. about it. Um, so, also, it looks like it's going to be a TV series, and it's going to span... All 32 years and all 15 numbered entries. What? That's going to be bringing in elements from every single Final Fantasy franchise. It's going to take it's, a very long time, so I don't. It's going. It. It's going to explore the struggle between magic and technology in a quest to bring peace to land in a conflict. So it's and not Final, Final, Fa- like Final that's Fantasy. 15. 15. <laughs> that's fifteen. That's literally fifteen. I know. Literally, basically every Final Fantasy. <laughs> no, right. no, not quite. It's definitely that's fifteen. Because the one dude relies on mechs, and you guys have magic. <laughs> like that's the story, right? I mean, and then ten, then there's ten where every, the world is growing around Waka, and he's in there bitching about it the entire time because he's an old racist. Okay. El bed bad, el bed bad. I so I don't like this writer just because they said uh, most details about the new TV series remain under lock and key parentheses blade. Like, okay, Blade. okay. Why are you bringing in a Keyblade to a Final Fantasy thing? What do you mean, why? Have you never played Kingdom Hearts? <laughs> yeah, no, I get that there's Final Fantasy characters in Kingdom Hearts, but there's not the same square. What? <laughs> it's the same universe. Same universe. I, I mean, I get what he's trying to say. He's saying you don't have Kingdom Hearts characters in Final Fantasy. So why when uh, talking about the Final Fantasy I live think, action? I think it's know, just a pun. I, I think, don't think it's anything. I think it's possible to bring over like Sora, Roxas. Oh, I mean, sure. Not the Disney people, but like Roxas and Sora and Namine, Axel, shit like that. Man, I want Roxas and Titus to like fuck people up. I don't think they're going to bring anything Kingdom Hearts related to the game. I think it was just a... I don't um, think that's ever going to get made, so... No. Just one squad. That's not. all I care about. Don't be a Karen. <laughs> so what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on video game movies? Huh? What are your thoughts on video game movies? <laughs> I gave my thoughts already. I'm still saying Mortal Kombat's the best one, though. I and Annihilation. First Mortal Kombat? Come on, dude. Super I'm Mario is the best one. Shut up. Dude, I, I <laughs> really love Need for Speed. I don't care. Really? I've never wasn't seen it. I didn't, I didn't watch it. It wasn't I, that great. Did you ever play the Need for Speed on like PS2 that mm-hmm. was live action? Yeah, dude. That thing was yes. so fucking cool. Where it would switch between fucking movie mode and regular mode. Like fucking, yeah. it was like watching bad TV. Yep. Oh yeah, I love that shit. <clears throat> but I mean, I still want to go back and watch Mortal Kombat every now and then. And the like YouTube live series that the people did was cool as shit. That was awesome. I what I need to watch is Red versus Blue because I used to watch. <laughs> oh my god! god. I mean, I used to watch lived the off Red versus fuck Blue. out of that dude. Ah, it's so good. Donut is my favorite. You would be. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's just like, that's the kind of energy I love. The this dude that's like fucking idiot, but he somehow accidentally saves the world. Well, <laughs> speaking of how about Hex? <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. You, you went know. there. Shots fired. <laughs> Shots fired. Hex, if you heard, if you hear this, which I know you won't. There goes our Hex do, on ship. I still love you. I, I love you. I still love Snow's you. Snow's burning his merch as we speak. <laughs> so. So for those of you that don't know, Hex Maybe. bought the uh rebought. Bought the yeah, rebought the optic brand. Fucking rebought. Which gives him now gives him ownership of LA Optic and Huntsman. Because he owns he owns Huntsman, doesn't he? Yeah. 
So now he owns two competitive Call of Duty franchises. And what my thought process is... And you're not allowed to have a stake in two teams. Yeah, you're not allowed to. So what my thought process is, because him and Nate Shot are still really good friends, he's going to sell Nate Shot the LA spot, and LA Optics going to become LA the- LA Hundred Thieves, and then <clears throat> the Chicago Huntsmen are going to transform into Chicago Optic because I thought I, Optic Gaming belongs in Chicago. It belongs at sixty fifty Russell Drive, mm-hmm. and it does not need to be out in LA. Optic has no ties to LA. It makes more sense if Optic was in fucking Texas because they were there for a little bit. But no, it needs to be in Chicago. And I won't hear any. I, I won't hear otherwise because it fucking. Ugh, it'd be so stupid. Shut the book. Unless it's Nate over. shot. Unless Nate shot took over Optic and brought it to LA. But even then, uh, it doesn't make sense because Nate shot owns Hundred Thieves, which is a gaming organization. It to, to me, it's a no brainer to that for that. He's gonna wants to make his money back. He can't have two premieres, Premier League or Premier spots. Is that what they're called? League spots. Yeah, league spots. Can't have two league spots. It's against the rules. So, and him and Nate shot are homies. Uh, to, to me, there's. But what's going to happen to like uh, the optic roster though? Are they going to get rebranded to LA, or is LA just going to get another team? I think LA will become Hundred Thieves. But like, are they going to drop then, the optic players and then pick up their own players, or were they? Just... God, I hope so. Optic Hundred Thieves or, tr- or optic LA was fucking trash, dude. <laughs> they weren't trash, but I I don't know. I... I guess it depends on what, how Nate Shot wants to take it, wants to do with it. Like, mm-hmm. would, would Scump rather play for Nate or, or Hex? Hex. Yeah, you're right. But but also, Scump likes living out in L.A. No, nah, no, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. That's why he did it for a long time. Mm. He likes he likes being in Texas. Yeah, Texas is nice. He also, I don't know. He also said that he doesn't want to do, like, the NBA bubble thing. Yeah, I heard that. So. And that he'd retire if he had to. Yeah. Oh no. Um. I. But my. I feel like. I feel like. Unless the. I don't feel like. I don't think he would completely tear down the entire team, and rebuild it from the ground up. I think he'd leave pieces that he thinks he can work around, mm-hmm. and build it into a winning team. Because Nate shot. Gun skill aside, was the smartest mind in Call of Duty, for, his time there. I agree. He knew how to play. He knew how to win games. Until he wasn't the, the best HBR spot. We don't talk about that. We do not talk about that. But yeah, he he's always known how to put a team together. He just had trouble being the center, the centerpiece that the team needed at that time, mm-hmm. in my opinion. But without Nate Shot, Call of Duty Esports is dead right now. Not dead, but nowhere near the success it is now. So I kind of have a question. I guess do you guys think the esports people make more money, or the people that stream the same games that the esports are about? It like depends. Don't actually, on, play esports. It, it depends on the streamer, man. Like, are you talking like like okay? Game? So if you, look at, like, if you look at like Scumpy and Nate Shot versus like Nick Merckx and Ten the Tatman, Nick Merckx and Ten the Tatman are making oh, more money for sure. Okay. Uh, Nate shot said it. Scump said it. Hexa said it. If 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 Scump stopped being a professional Call of Duty player, he would be a multimillionaire right now. Okay. Uh, so then, do you think it's more just the thrill of the competition that keeps him going on that? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. He he stated how he loves competing. That's his thing. He that wants. At, at some point, he said he's going to retire and focus on streaming and YouTube videos and stuff like that. But because. It's a, it's a great retirement plan. You have this fucking audience that you've built up over the past t- 10 years. Right. And they want to see you. They want to interact with you. And when, cause they do stream as well. Like scum streams every right. day. Yeah. So, but they're not uh, like putting all their time into streaming. It's just, I'm putting right. all my time into getting better at the game and I might as well stream while well, doing it. Exactly. It's the off season now. So yeah, scum's making fucking money moves right now. There, okay. Because I always wondered about that. Because like with Magic too, like uh, you're gonna make way more streaming than you ever will trying to grind through the tournaments. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, the tournaments don't even make. Even if I you win, like the, if, even if you win the tournament. Yeah, like even you're you still. Win, even most champs. of them. Like uh, most champs of the like 
like halfway big tournaments that aren't like end of the year championships, you're basically making what you put in to get to that tournament at back. I think champs is what four hundred thousand right now per person. No, it's like the prize from grand millions. prize. Grand prize is millions now. Yeah, I for guess the what's winning team about League of Legends is that there are million dollars on the line. Oh yeah, Call of Duty too. I'm, Call of Duty. I don't know if you guys remember this. I know Snow's gonna remember it, but Call of Duty was in the uh, fucking X Games. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Wow. Oh uh, yeah. Fucking That's why? impressive. Why? Can't... Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. I have no idea, but I can tell you that that tournament, the first tournament, I think it was Ghost, had my favorite Ghost moment of it. Probably my favorite competitive Call of Duty moment of all time. In it, when Proofy got that ace on a complexity. You remember that Snow? Yep. That shit was fucking hype. So uh the last Call of Duty champs uh took four point six million. Jesus. Jesus. Damn. So it's like a million per person. Right. Still, could you get like could you imagine making a million dollars playing a game you play every day? Nope. But like Maybe. the team gets some oh. of it, the owners get some of it, so Yeah, right. I mean still though, no, oh, no, no, I sad. only get nine hundred and fifty thousand. Damn. Well that that's another thing that I don't I'm not sure about because I've never read any like any of the contracts. Do winners take part of that purse or do they get salary and then owners take that and that can you know what I mean? I, I would just, imagine they get a decent part of it because they're the ones like actually going out and doing it. Depends right, but on, they have depends crazy on salaries too. Yeah. True. I'm about huh. to look at what scum salary or scum salary is. I think it's like two hundred thousand Is it a month? I don't I don't wanna I don't <laughs> A month? Uh yeah. I mean you're pretty close. Uh eight hundred and eighty four thousand dollars a year. <laughs> The top, pl- the top paid Call of Duty player is Prim. Well, he's got like three thousand wins, right? At one point one million dollars a, mo- a year. Jesus. Followed by Clayster at one point one, like one point one thousand one hundred well, a million eighty eight thousand. It's because Clay won the last two champs. Mm-hmm. And then Scump, Karma, Formal. J Cap, oh shit! I forgot he still played. Nah, he retired. Oh, did he? Slasher, R Cities, Prestini, and Apathy. Those are the top ten highest paid Call of Duty players. Last five are trash. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even put into like perspective how much I mean, money R-Cities, they make. R Cities was good, but R Cities is good. <laughs> See, I guess, I don't know, the, the whole competitive scene for Call of Duty is something I haven't really ever, like, dabbled into. I've always kind of wanted to. <clears throat> Same with League of Legends. Like, I don't play the game, but I can watch their tournaments, like, all day. The reason why I enjoy the Call of Duty tournaments is because I used to watch the Halo tournaments all the time, so. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The, the Call of Duty. The Call of Duty tournaments are just the, the atmosphere to them. Are, yeah. are so, it's so lively and it's so fun because, like, it, it, when you're watching a basketball game and they hit a dagger at the end of the game, the crowd goes wild. You know, yeah. same thing happens when you get a clutch kill on a search and a story game eleven or round eleven game yeah. five. Yeah, absolutely. And like, and that's the, the funny thing because people will always be like, "Oh, you're gonna get excited about a game." Yeah, dude, watch those tournaments. Watch those moments happen. See how like everyone jumps out of their seats and acts like it's like they just won the fucking World Series because in their minds they did. Right. Like. In their field, they just did. It's, they it's just no did the unthinkable thing. It's no different than watching a basketball game or a football game or, or soccer or any other kind, anything fucking pro yeah. wrestling. It's no different. It's exactly. I went to an MLG with our buddy Levi for mm. Dota. I think Dota Two was playing, and one of the Call of Duties. I want to say maybe Black Ops Two, if not like Advanced Warfare or something mm. like that. Um. But he went for Dota, being a huge fan. I don't know anything about Dota. So I was just being a good friend, sitting there watching this tournament with him. And like the slightest thing happens, like a character dies, and the whole place just goes bonkers. Yeah. And I'm just looking at him, I'm like, what's going on? He's like, oh, and he tried to explain to me. Obviously, I don't know Dota, so I don't know anything. And I was like, cool. And literally, people were going bonkers over a TV screen and like oh. over in call of duty, like there was nothing really going on, but 
Dota, man, like people acted like that team just won the World Series for killing a simple character, and the game wasn't even over. No, <laughs> it was just like a slight moment, like, oh hey, this character died, and the everybody goes nuts, and I was like, damn, dude, well, like this is nuts. Because that's the thing with the MOBAs, like every single Killing somebody second in that is fucking hard. So <laughs> like if they go to jungle and you kill the enemy jungler before they get to get their buffs, like you just fucked the entire game plan. Like, yeah, like they now have to spend an extra five minutes to get to where you were like 20 minutes ago. Yeah, like they're building this tower and all of a sudden like this dude throws somebody on this tower and kills another teammate or kills an enemy teammate. And it's just like the whole place just erupted. And I was like, yeah. I don't know what's going on, but yay. So, okay. So to put it in like in terms that you might like, imagine two control players are going at it. And then the one control player has that extra counter spell that just took over the entire game. That's the equivalent of an, er, a player going down earlier. Gotcha. Like it's that moment that more than likely we're winning this game. Now, all we have to do is not fuck it up. Right. But yeah. Like I, I get it. Like, even just being there, man, like that energy was oh, yeah. insane. Like, dude, uh, still like bigger tournaments for like a Call of Duty. I couldn't even imagine like the atmosphere and being that team that people are cheering for. Like, that adrenaline alone would just skyrocket you. Right? Makes you wonder why they even need like the G Fuel and shit like that. <laughs> right. Why would they need the G Fuel when they have fucking Adderall? <laughs> <laughs> well. well. I mean, what? Sorry, that that was not supposed to be said. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, I, the atmosphere on those things are awesome. And I was at the Cleveland Cavaliers game the first time that LeBron came back as a Miami Heat player. Oh, that crowd was something. <laughs> I'll tell you, the, the craziest crowd I ever saw was me and Devin were there at uh, Fastlane. And. Asuka comes out. She just won the Royal Rumble the month before. She hadn't said who she was going to face at WrestleMania yet. Asuka comes out and challenges Charlotte Flair. And I popped so fucking hard. That or uh, when, uh, because I was at, remember when they were like getting close to Raw 1000? Or 900 or some shit like that? And the night before, the Raw before the big show, the big anniversary show, um, Jericho came back. Mm-hmm. I was there for that. Oh, nice! I was at that RAW in Fort Wayne, and dude, <laughs> fucking pop, <laughs> the pop. Not as big as Edge's pop in his return, but the pop. Well, yeah, it it was hilarious because every single time during that game, as soon as LeBron touched the ball, the entire arena just went into and I hate yous and like he'd pass the ball and everybody start cheering and then the second LeBron got the ball again it was just brr I hate that's you that's so funny that's it so was funny hilarious because yeah I remember watching him and like man it literally doesn't matter who like this game doesn't matter at all right now it is just we hate LeBron dude when I went to I went to one Pacers game in my life and we played the, the Hornets it was just right this past year like December or something like that. And fucking anytime Cody Zeller got the ball, they'd oh, start no. chanting your bald to him or Rogaine. Yeah, like, okay. I'm, I like remember the Rogaine around, I'm like looking around and I'm like, dude, this is so fucked up. Yeah. Why are they that's, doing that's this to this man? Funny. I wrestled in the Lafayette Theater. Yeah. And uh <clears throat> I get out there and I'm I climbed up on the uh the the ropes. I was getting in the ring. I just look over and this one fucking guy at the bar is just pointing at the top of his head going, you're bald. You're bald. <laughs> I look. I, I just looked at him. I said, no shit. Really? And, yeah. And that, that was all it took for him to stop doing that. But like, it was <laughs> My, like, anytime, what the fuck are you trying to get out of this, dude? Anytime I've wrestled, every, every, every time I go somewhere new and there's a crowd there, it's always... You're a midget. No, the fuck I'm not. I'm short <laughs> as fuck. I'm very short, but I'm not a midget, sir. They don't Fan- even hurt me no more. Like I'm fans are just on a whole fucking other level. Dickheads, dude. Right. Jesus. <laughs> I'm going out there, put my fucking body on the line for ten fucking dollars, and you're gonna make fun of me for being short, you fucking inconsiderate fuck. 
I mean, in all fairness, they probably think you're out there making like thousands of dollars. No, they don't. No, there's no <laughs> way. I went. No, there. there's somebody they know in I the get crowd. a handshake and a fucking hot dog. Snow. What? I don't even get that. But last time I went to last time I wrestled down in Ohio, right? I went and got a sandwich during a fucking intermission. Went out and I bought a sandwich because I was fucking hungry. And Jay comes back and says, "Hey, man." You, they, they think you guys are superstars. You can't eat what they're eating. I said, what? He was like, yeah, just, just don't go buy things from the concession stand. They got to they gotta think you're that? better than them. Jay, the fucking promoter. What the fuck? He about to feed you? <laughs> that's right. That's what I said. I said, will you get me a sandwich next time then, sir? And he said, no. I said, then I will buy it myself. Thank that you. That sounds haven't, like exactly what Jay would say. Haven't, yep. haven't, been, haven't been booked since then. <laughs> Same. I told him yeah. I was going to make a return and they never booked me again. I literally only went there because I wanted to wrestle Snow in front of a crowd and he said, Your guys' styles wouldn't match. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Fucking loser. <laughs> we tried to get Chicago booked and he said, No thanks. Try to get it Devin doesn't... booked, but he, he doesn't like you. <laughs> he hates Devin. <laughs> well, I don't know why. What have I done? <laughs> That's what no. I want to know. You're Devin. Devin. Remember that time me and you had a banger? We walked to the back, and that one dude is like, you guys are trash. And you said, no, we're not. <laughs> yeah, I had plenty of run-ins with that guy that couple times I was there. Who is it? I don't remember his name. Who's the dude that died? Oh, no. Scarecrow. He, don't bring he, called me the day he, he called me the day he died. Never talked to this dude on the phone. <laughs> Rest in peace, Scarecrow. Imagine Call if you Devin. Hung up or not hung Devin up hung up. never answered. Dude, no, I found I dead. Want, I didn't want to talk to him. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> think he was going to be dead. He just needed somebody, Devin. You could have saved a life, my friend. <laughs> no, I, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it wasn't him that killed him. <laughs> Fuck. Overall, right, big anyways, win for Hex and Optic. Yeah, big win for Scarecrow. All right, Brad. You got a <laughs> lot of work to do here, bud. Um, before we go, let's. I'm gonna tell you guys a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> Borderlands Three Battle Royal called Arms Race comes out November 10th. Ooh. And uh, Sony is on the cusp of buying Crunchyroll for almost a billion dollars. So. Yeah. Oh no shit. Share, share that oh, that would be cool. Crazy. That would be cool as hell. I wish I could watch Crunchyroll. Yeah. Well, you should. Everybody else got on PlayStation. I need to finish on the phone. I need to finish Shippuden. Yes, you do. Yeah. How far? Oh, that's right. You got to where it was. I, I got to episode 140, which is. No, they're um, always bringing it around to anime, man. <laughs> I don't have control. Fucking Sasuke <laughs> met uh, Marta or whatever. Marta. Like, it it Marta. just ends. It just ended. It goes into Japanese. And I was like, I can't do this. Yeah, See, you're going to. Really no, 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 no. Uh, totally. Toby just revealed who the. Hell yeah. I was going to say, do you remember when you were like, Toby's such a fucking dork, I hate him. I'm like, alright, just keep watching. Yeah, uh, I can't believe he, had, he didn't know. Like already. He had Sasuke right. in the cave. Toby's like, this is who I am. And then I was like, oh shit. And then the next episode's like Japanese. And I was like, no, 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 no. I need this. And I still haven't been able to catch up. Also, I, I you also should remember me saying that when you wanted uh, when you wanted Oh, fuck, when you wanted Cameron to go as Sasuke, that you could either be Itachi or Kakashi. Hopefully you know why on that now. Because Itachi's very huge later on. Yeah, I no, still... He's not there I'm, yet. He's about... I'm not I'm, even close. I know. I know. Because I, I told really... you guys, like, I loved Itachi, and you're like, it gets better. And yep. I still... I'm like, where? I need it. God, I still love it. That entire scene is just like, fuck. Yeah, you're about to learn, bud. If you ever start watching again, it's coming. If I can find it on English dub anywhere. Sasuke gets fucking I mean, you have the internet. There are infinite. Yeah, you're literally on the thing that you can find it on. (laughs) Really? Yeah. Uh, Dude, fuck yeah. Just literally. Well, never mind. I can't. I'm not going to say that out loud. Talk about it after podcast. Uh, I have something to talk about, too, before we leave, too. One more thing. All right. Um. So the Lad Bible posted a, an article today, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> that said, that says right. I'm going to read you the title verbatim. 
Cyberpunk 2077 developer not comfortable with December 10th release date. Oh, God. <coughs> so, he, sa- he says, he goes on to say, like, we're comfortable with it releasing. We were com- We were content with it being able to release on the 19th, but the, t- the extra three weeks has given us more time to get comfortable with it. We are still, let me see exact wording, so the, I'm not lying. We feel maybe not comfortable, but confident that it will release. So there's still a fucking air of speculation that even from within the developer, like within the company itself, that Cyberpunk 2077 is not coming out on the 10th. Well, it's because they got to do it for the Xbox One, P- PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X, you know, everything else. Yeah, for sure. I get why they're doing it. I get why it's happening, but like they got to stop put. I think that game releases should stop getting year like a year long like release date. Like this is coming out this time next year because you never know what's going to happen between right. now and then. You never know if a pandemic's going to hit. You never know right it, this that the other. Get your game working, make it like work. And then just be like, hey, it's coming out in a couple months. It. Hey, this game's coming out next month. Yeah. Boom. Well, it's funny because I went, to, I went to Best Buy today mm-hmm. and the there's a giant Cyberpunk 2077 poster like from one window to the next, like mm-hmm. on, across their whole building yep. saying uh, the, re- the the original release date, which was November, what? 10th something the like that. The original recently was like April 20th. Well, I mean like the yeah. la- latest one was yeah. like November whatever. But like just think of how much money you're spending on advertising alone on that just to go, okay, well shit, we're not ready. Like right. at that point you're losing money as well because Well, I mean your game's already gone gold. What's like, that mean? Oh, just from pre-orders? Yeah. Well, I don't um, even know what that means. Uh I don't know the exact numbers, but it's just like going platinum or whatever for an album. Oh, like so gotcha. many copies sold, blah, blah, blah. Gotcha. But like, because you post advertising for April, well, then it gets pushed back to June. Well, then you put out advertising for June. Well, then it gets pushed back to November. Now you put an advertising out for November. Well, now you got to do advertising for December, right. let alone if it gets postponed again, like... You're just wasting money, so why not just get a solid release date, like Cody said, like, okay, here's our game this time, and then just promote the ever-loving shit out of it then. Right. It would make more sense. Yeah, yeah. don't give yourself two years and go, all right, well, this is when we think it's going to come out. Right. It shouldn't be, we might do this, it might be ready at this time. No, have it ready, and then announce it. Yeah, you can post, they... And you can even post like tra- teasers and trailers and shit like that with an estimated time that it might come out. Coming right. holiday 2021. Come, yeah. You know what I mean? You can post that kind of shit and it still be fine. Well, I'm I'm the Pokemon DLC got released early because of the pandemic. Oh, did it really? Yeah, I like I don't leaked. think uh well, I think I don't think Crown Tundra was supposed to come out till uh December, but mm-hmm. with the pandemic and people needing something to do Pokemon was like, here you go, play our stuff. That's where I got leaked. Good brothers. Well, I'm sure it probably got leaked too, but Pokemon are some good brothers. But I mean, like we've talked about before, like we'll get Death Stranding. Like it <laughs> failed because there was so much hype that they built for five years just to be like, oh hey, this is not at all what you guys thought it was Death, going to be. Death Stranding, fucking No Man's Sky. Yeah, fucking... we talked about this a couple of episodes ago. Oh yeah, yeah. we did. <laughs> That's what I said. But Caleb wasn't here then. I listened. I promise. <laughs> well, Snow doesn't want us to rehash old topics, so we'll <laughs> fuck ourselves. <laughs> Sorry, Brad. Overall, big win for this podcast. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Big win for Caleb actually wanting to do something with his friends. You know. Love <laughs> You'll love I, to see it. I, I do my best. All right. So that's the episode. Cool. <laughs> uh, uh, see you guys fun. next week. Yep. Appreciate all the, the viewers and the uh, the listeners, you know. Thanks for having me, guys. Who's plugging first? My my one contract is done. Uh, let Devi go first. Devi, go. Devin's dead. All right. Well, Devin's had the aneurysm that I had before we started. <laughs> All right. So fine. Uh, you can find me 
on Twitch at Gingerbeard Man Gamer and said I wasn't going to plug in the beginning. Now I am. Here we are. <laughs> they, they literally cannot find you because you do not stream. I don't. I'm going to get to it, man. Like, you're doing Among Us tomorrow, right? Yes. I might do that then. That's my boy. Uh, do you know what time for that? Never mind. We'll talk like, about it later. Like, yeah, we'll talk about it later. Um, also, YouTube, Gingerbeard Man Gamer, and then on Twitter at T Gingerbeard Man. Oh, yeah. Uh, Twitter.com slash sexy Devi B. Twitch.com slash friendly plays X. Twitch.com slash the B Snow, the baking sheet <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> Whatever right. Caleb does, Caleb SXE44. I'm I'm on Twitter. That's, That's it. it. And make but sure you guys all follow Devin. Make, make sure you guys all follow Devin on Instagram too. No need. His, Literally his no penis. Problem. My friends deserve their happiness. <laughs> <laughs> you guys uh, find me over on twitchtv friendly <laughs> Or youtube.com forward slash friendly plays or twitch.com at friendly plays. And you can find me on YouTube and Twitter at the Beast Snow. And I am 600 uh, champion points away from getting into the weekend league, so I might stream after that. Fuck yes! Yeah. Twitch.tv slash the Beast Snow. So. You better get that shit this weekend. Um, he will. But it's the Beast I might, uh, but I have to remove my streaming equipment downstairs because I have to have another child. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! Brittany, run over here. We have to do Lord of the Rings trivia. I have a question. I thought of it earlier. Oh, okay. It's I thought to, one. I was about to look it up. How does Frodo know Sam? Same sex partners. He's his gardener. <laughs> there we go. Happy okay. Lord of the Rings podcast. Was I right? Were they same sex partners? Yes. No. <laughs> I think that's how hobbits reproduce. I've never well, seen a girl uh, hobbit. This is Gardner, so basically I was right. So until uh, next Monday, uh, bye guys. Bye. 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 I'll see you tonight. See you on Ghost. Bye. Have a beautiful time. Bye. Jesus Christ. Have a beautiful time. <laughs>